talk, talk to me. WSRadio.com The San Diego Council on Literacy brings you Literacy for All with your host, Jose Cruz. Welcome to the show. I'm Jose Cruz. You're listening to Literacy for All, and we have as our next guest an author, Daphne Russell. She is an educator or retired educator. She's going to tell us more about uh, her book, her philosophy about, philosophy about education, and uh, just a whole lot more. Daphne, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jose. Thanks for having me. So glad to have you. Um, and uh, we're going to have a, a fun time with uh, your adventures in education and also just uh, the, the new ventures that you have, the things that, that you're, you're doing just by, by writing the book and then getting out there. I did want to share something with you, and you're going to want this. You're going to love this. Uh, it's in the health section of the San Diego Union Tribune, today's paper. Longevity uh-huh. page by page, body of research it's research shows book readers live longer, better lives. Now you and I know what that means, but you're you're doing you're approaching uh, readership or reading from another level, and it's more like a survival level. Tell us in general your your philosophy about reading, reading in the classroom, the students that you've worked with, um, your story, and, and and your new campaign. Oh, okay. That's a lot of questions. Yeah, yeah. Take one um, at a time. So, uh, so tell us what you're doing okay. right now. Okay. So right now, because of the book, I'm using the book kind of as a platform um, to start a new nonprofit called Book Save Lives. And um, if you were to read the book, you'd see that probably I wrote the book uh, and then planned on this, but I didn't plan on this. It just came to me that I, I really needed to continue what I was doing in the classroom, but now outside of the classroom. And I believe that the more books a person, a child reads, the better chances they are, they have towards success and obviously towards health also, of course, according to that article. Very good. And we'll, we'll come back to the article. Tell, tell us about the, because uh, you, you've been an educator in Tucson. Tell us about the students uh, uh, that you've worked with and and why uh, reading is so important in their lives. You know, I've, I'm I'm almost done with your book. I have to say, and I love I'm enjoying it. Uh, I I love your philosophy. I love your students, and, and I love the way that you've approached their particular needs. But but what why is reading and the approach that you're taking so important to this specific population of students? Well, this population, I believe, um, what happens is they become tested. And then they become tested and tested. And then because of the testing push, people start teaching them a certain way. And they don't value, or the value that they have as individuals is no longer valued. And instead, it's just about testing. And I believe that those students, you know, they deserve, the, they deserve to read on their own, but they're not allowed to. They're told what to read. They're told how to answer. And if they're provided books that will help them you know, kind of create their own life and make their own choices, then I believe they'll choose differently. And I also think they'll choose the right answer for the test, believe it or not. If they're just reading, I believe it um, feeds their brains in ways that educators are not really valuing because the state doesn't value it because they value testing more. And and, and also there's something to be said about um, the curriculums. And I know people uh, work really hard to produce curriculums, but you get straight to to reading. And and I I think we all understand that maybe not enough reading takes place in school. Is that accurate? Yeah, I, I don't think so. I think that, you know, when we were younger, there weren't very many other things to do. Our parents kicked us outside but if it was raining, we were stuck in the house. We didn't have very much, very many choices with the television, right? right? But now the kids have other options, so they don't have any downtime. So kids, the kids that I was serving, they never had downtime because they had their phones. And so our schools, I feel, are in a different position. They have to teach literacy. They can't just assume the kids can read and then assign them a book and have a class set of books and think the kids are reading those books because I don't believe the average child is reading the assigned book in class. <laughs> I, I'm chuckling to myself because I know that in your classroom, 
you made sure that the students were reading their book. Yes. Right, one at a time. Yes. I made sure. Yes, and, that, and that's part of the fun of, of, of reading, uh, reading uh, Read or Die, which I think people need to get a copy of. Um, let's um, just, uh, you brought up something that's real important that I have to address in, in the course of doing presentations uh, to, to audiences, and that is the, uh, the competition that we have uh, with uh, with cell phones, smartphones, uh, flat screens, uh, video games, uh, right. just all the all the ways that we can be entertaining ourselves and not reading. And you just said it that that more, may, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but maybe more now than ever, we need to make sure kids are reading. I actually agree, and what you just said reminded me that part of what I do or I was doing and I want to continue doing, is having kids recognize that being right here, right now is okay. And I think that um, the video games take us away from right here, and it creates, you know, maybe attention deficit in some ways, and it creates this longing to be somewhere that we aren't. But when you're reading and you connect to the reading, you bring the reading back toward you, and you allow it to be okay to be right here. And I think for all of the reasons, for the choices, for the mental health, for the, um, the emotional health, all of those reasons, besides for the literacy, the vocabulary, the thought process, we also need to be okay with being right here. And books allow us to be right here and because we're, the, we're reading. We're the ones who we're navigating the actual book, and it brings us back to ourselves. And that's really what I did all day long with all of the kids in class as much as I possibly could. Very good. Uh, you have, um, I want to say, a, a a list of books, uh, and maybe it's not a list to you. I mean, you tell me. Uh, as as I'm reading reading your book, uh, I'm seeing a, a, at least one book that I have read, and, and I'm going to get the title wrong. This is the one, the, the main character, character is Arnold, and I think he belonged to a... a um, right, a, the Absolute True Diary of a Part-Time yes, Indian. Yes, yes. Sherman Alexi. So I want to write a book one day, and I want my book to be on the list of books that you hand out to your students. Now tell me about those books, if you could, and and wh- why you have them and what impact they're having. Well, first of all, my, I want to say my, my really my philosophy was that a child had to be able to choose a book that they knew all the words or almost all the words, and then they had to make connections to those words. So finding that first book can be very difficult because kids – would come in and say, well, I read all the Harry Potters. I'm like, well, you couldn't have read all the Harry Potters, otherwise you wouldn't be in my class, and we wouldn't be having this conversation. Mm. So to get a child to admit that they could only read a certain level of book is very hard. So, again, it's being able to be okay with me right here, right now. And so I would allow that kind of a, a positive space, you know, an accepting space where they could start wherever they needed to start. And once they got started, which is usually a book called Drive-By, which, yes, it is about a drive-by, but the purpose of the book is, one, it, it intrigues a lot of kids because of the, gangs, the gang-related aspect of it. But the protagonist has a struggle with whether or not to follow his brother's footsteps, and that's the next part. So I, I have to find books that will intrigue the kids, and then I have to find books that have a protagonist that struggles and then a protagonist that overcomes. And all of these kids need to know that they can overcome so every book I had in my class would have characters that, whose struggles may reflect their own struggles, whose home lives may reflect their own home lives, but then with a protagonist that overcomes. I, need, I needed all of the kids to be able to see they could overcome. So you're, you're, you're looking for those individuals who um, are coming, uh, uh, facing the same kinds of challenges I think that you see your students facing. And uh, and I think that's really important. Given well, it just it just makes sense. I mean, we we we, you know, we pick books for for a reason, and and it's another conversation I like to have with people that uh, quite quite often what we're doing in our schools. Oh, let's put it this way, and this is a story I like to tell. You want to buy a book? You have money. You go to Barnes and Noble. You walk in the store, and as soon as you get in, the person at the store says, "Here's the book that you're going to buy today." Are you going to read that book? And, and you and I have you and I have had that conversation. And it's like probably right. not. 
Probably not. And, and so we wouldn't have anyone do that to ourselves, but we do it to our children all the time. Right. And so, uh, and so you're giving them choices and you're finding, uh, finding uh, uh, characters that they can relate with. Uh, relate with. Uh, we have about a minute before the break, um, Daphne, and just um, um, got like just so many directions we can be taking uh, with what you're doing. And I do want to get into uh, more with uh, the whole idea, literally the idea of books saving lives. And you've been bold in, in what you've written. And your book title um, is, it just gets straight to the point. So I do want to talk about more of those things. How has the, the response been to what you've written from people in your circle? Well, it's been really, it's been fantastic. Uh, my friends, of course, many of them have been supporting me this whole time, but now that they've read the book, I think they're actually pleasantly surprised that it's even better than they had hoped, <laughs> I think. And Good. then yeah. it's really great because they're very, I have a lot of critical friends. Um, but then there's been strangers that have approached me, strangers that have written to me, strangers giving my books to superintendents here in Tucson. Um, my book is actually going to be with the assistant dean at the U of A, because, just because two people are exchanging books. She's like, what are you reading? They're like, oh, you should read this. Uh-huh. And so it's pretty exciting that people feel like passing it on. Very good. I'm glad to hear that. I think more people need to know about what you've written and the things that you're concerned about. We're going to be back with our second segment. Uh, you're listening to Daphne Russell. She's the author of Read or Die. I'm Jose Cruz. This is Literacy for All. We're on WS Radio the worldwide leader in internet talk. I've heard this is like one of the best pizza spots in town. Yes, it is. I'll do a slice of pepperoni, slice of vegetarian. You got it. And I will pay for all of that in three days. In three days? <laughs> What's that mean? Well, wait, you accept credit cards. That money's not going to hit your account for three days anyway. I need my money quicker. At Chase, we hear you. With Express Funding, card payments are in your Chase account the next business day. Go to chase.com slash express funding. Chase for business, so you can. Compensated participation. All businesses are subject to credit approval. Not all clients are eligible for next business day funding and additional terms, conditions, and restrictions apply. Donate cash, furniture, clothes, and other gently used household items to Father Joe's Villages and get a nice tax break in April. Every donation is tax deductible. Believe you can make a difference. Be Father Joe. Go to neighborhood.org or call 1-800-HOMELESS to donate today. Life is full of misadventures. From car crashes to home fires to getting choked out on the mat. Yes, I said getting choked out because I'm Carlos Kramer, jiu-jitsu competitor, MMA and media personality, and mild-mannered insurance agent. You can follow my adventures on Kick-Ass Radio, and I can protect you from life's misadventures at Kramer Insurance. Home, auto, life, business, and workers' comp, we're at KramerINS.com, and I want you to join my world. Identity theft costs over $20 billion a year. When was the last time you changed all of your passwords? Don't be a victim. The nonprofit securing our eCity Foundation is here to support you. They serve individuals, families, seniors, businesses, and nonprofits throughout San Diego, helping to make a safer cyber experience for all. For more information, visit securingourecity.org or call 619-630-2444. Too much to do? Not enough time to get it done? Call on the experts at Another 8 Hours for your business support needs. By partnering with Another 8 Hours, we allow you to focus on the more important matters, like being in front of your clients, doing what you do best, rather than being stuck at a desk pouring over paperwork, rummaging through emails, returning phone calls, and struggling to get everything done by yourself. Meanwhile, your family and social life are going down the drain. Go to another8hours.com or call 8 more hours. That's 866-734-6877. Hi, this is Rob Barnett, VinVillage.com, where wine lovers connect. Be sure to tune in weekly to Vin Village Radio for exclusive, in-depth interviews with the who's who in wine and food. Securing our eCity Foundation is a nonprofit organization focused on cybersecurity awareness and education. Formed in 2011, their mission is to enable every San Diegan to live, work, and play safely in the cyber world. For more information, visit securingourecity.org or call 619-630-2444. Securingourecity.org, 619-630-2444. 
securingrecity.org.